Now we are joined by Alverno head coach Sean Jarmus. Coach Jarmus, I don't. Do you know how long the streak was in conference? Um, I believe it was three years. Forty-four straight games, forty-seven at home. Yes. <laughs> you wear the be the change. We talked about it between the games. Talk about how this shows be the change right now. Well, I got to tell you, after how last year went, just having the girls come back, work harder, believe in themselves, and believe in what our coaching staff was trying to instill in them, and it all it all came to fruition today. We we fought. Our starting pitcher, a fifth-year senior, gets hurt in the first inning, and we go to a freshman who throws six gem innings for us. And it's just, I told the girls in the huddle, this was what a team win is all about, because that Lakeland team's a darn good team. Well, and you come off a 12-1 loss in game number one. They put up six runs in the first inning. It could be very, very easy for a team that hasn't won for a while, that doesn't have that kind of winning attitude, just sit there and be like, man, let's just put it in, put it in park at this point in time. Your team came back out there, two outs in the bottom of the first, five runs, the three-run bomb by Andrea Ramirez. How did that change the spirits in the dugout at that point? Well, I got to be honest. They, the first inning after we gave up the six, they came back and they were talking. They're like, now it's our turn. This team doesn't know the word quit. They just will keep fighting and keep going. And I did not think that we were going to just roll over. I knew we were going to come back. To put five on the board, I was kind of happy with that. Uh, Dre just hit an absolute bomb. Um, but again, look at how hard all the girls were hitting the ball. It was, I don't even know how many hits we had that game, but it had to be a lot because we just kept going. 10 runs, 11 hits for you I'll take in it. that one. And, you know, an intentional walk issue late in the game. You know, Izzy Torres just, they, they couldn't get her out in game number two. And so they just said, ah, we're not even dealing with this. Izzy has been on fire. Um, she's actually a really good person to talk about because last year she struggled a little bit. Um, we actually changed her hitting approach a little bit. And we are working on keeping her hands up. And as her hands are staying up and she's coming down to and through the ball, her power has just taken off. I believe that was home run number three. Um, and I got to be honest with you, there was not a single one of those three that had any air under them. They were all line drives that would have cleared any park we play in. And she has just done a remarkable job believing in what we have been preaching. And I got to be honest, that that's what we need is when we got seniors like that who are willing to show the younger kids that they're willing to change. And what more respect can there be by Coach Tammy than to put her on with nobody on base? I mean, that's just the – I went to Izzy after the inning, and I'm like, that's the ultimate sign of respect for a hitter. And she deserved it. Well, speaking of people that have maybe flames coming off their bats right now for Alverno, you have Lexi Hess along with Giselle Moreno, both, I believe, with four-game hitting streaks now. Especially Hess, she has really been lighting it up over the last four games. I think in the past four games, Hess is 9 for 12. Something like that. I mean, she is just with her first home run um, and three doubles, if I'm not mistaken. She is just seeing the ball so well. Um, and Giselle to come in as a freshman. And she just she has no fear. This, this kid literally has no fear. She's like, I can hit with the best of them. And she doesn't care where she hits in the lineup. She just wants to swing. And her results are proving it. She's, she's doing an amazing job. I want to go back to Torres, too. One thing I wanted to bring up, she has the key three base error, throwing error. Then she comes back over the next two innings, three consecutive hard shot ground balls to her that she fields. One of them wasn't even cleaned, you know, so you mm -hmm. start to get the nerves start to go, but then just fires bullets over to first base. And something that I think I've noticed with her as she's developed is that mental aspect of leaving that bad play behind you. Well, the cool part about that, and um, again, if you were watching, I don't know if people can hear it or not, but after she made the error, she literally went up to everybody. It's like, my bad, girls, my bad, pick me up, we're going to get it. She knew that the ball was coming to her again, and she knew she wanted to make up for it. She owned the mistake right away. Everyone makes errors. Those are part of the game. But when the team can pick her up like that, and then she obviously picks herself up, um, it, what, what more can you say about that? It's just, it's, it's the mentality that we have changed. We've been talking since I took over last February about culture change here. And if this game doesn't show the culture change that we're doing, I don't know what will, because this is a new ball club. And it's a ball club that people in the neck should probably be a little more worried than they have been in the past, because we're gonna be scrappy. We don't know how many games we're gonna win, but we're always gonna be scrappy. This team will not quit. Nevaeh Cruz, you started talking about her. A freshman has to step in there. Hadn't pitched more than three innings all season. Goes six 
against a team that put up 12 runs against you in the first game. What kind of performance is that for a freshman to step in into that situation and do that for you? Well, I got to be honest. I've actually known Nevaeh since she was eight, and I have seen her mature throughout her career. And we were on a three-inning assumed limit from the trainer. And with how well she was playing, I'm not going to lie, and our trainer Kayla is probably going to be mad at me. I avoided her the rest of the game, and I was going to make her come up to me and tell me that she had to pay, pull Bea because I know the fight in Nevaeh. And, again, she wanted the ball. She Every inning I went to her, I'm like, are you okay? And I know she was hurting. Um, her back was sore. And she kept saying, Sean, give it to me, give it to me. And look what she did. Again, she wasn't supposed to pitch six. And not only did she pitch six, she pitched six amazing innings. Something that isn't maybe going to get highlighted in a win like this, but that fifth inning for you, two quick outs, and then Sam Marchant comes up with a single that gets you through the bottom of your order now to the top for the sixth and potentially seventh yep. inning. People may not see that, but she's not the only one. Also, you had, um, you also had Emily Anguiano who had a key hit there the inning before yep. as well that brought in that extra run of Torres, rewarding her for that double and saving me for, from a scorebook mistake <laughs> that I had already made in my book. So. Y- we talk about just the last on Monday just didn't quite get those key hits where you could have been competitive yep. in games, and here you get them, and the outcome is a W. Absolutely, and again, I mean, you literally go one through nine. You go on our bench even. Every single person contributed in this win. I mean, M, key hit. Sam has been struggling, key hit. Sam Vinti, I believe, had a hit in, the, in this game too, or was it last game? Yeah, she had she had a single, came around to score in the okay. fourth. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I mean, yeah. She's, she, she's been fighting through some issues herself, and look what she's doing. She keeps working, and I, I think that's what I mean, again, about the culture changes. These girls are willing to keep fighting because us as coaches are not giving up on them, and they're not giving up on themselves. And for me, what else can be said? I mean, I, there's not a single girl on this team that didn't contribute. Well, in the Vinti single, yeah. you had two quick outs. Yep. She gets the single. Then your one through four batters all get base hits, yep. and you go from looking like a zero inning to a four-run inning that was the difference, the difference in the, the game. game. Absolutely. Yeah. It's 100% the difference of the game. And again, these girls, they don't know how to die. They're, they're going to keep fighting. And whether we're up or down, they're going to keep going. And that's what I love about coaching these girls. And we're only going to get better. This is literally, we're going up from here. And again, we're going to keep competing. And... I, <laughs> I, I can't say enough about how good that Lakeland team is. And look what they did in the first game. And we literally, after the six runs, we held them. And that's just the tenacity that these girls have. They're just going to keep fighting. They're going to keep going. They knew that they had a chance to win this game. Um, now, my heart rate may have been a little bit high, but I can deal with that. Um, they, they just they kept going. They kept going. Again, I mean, just look at the defense. Our, our whole infield, Sid at short did great. Izzy made up for her error. Vinti did great at first. Giselle at second. Marchant catching. I mean, Bea fielding her position. And then our outfielders made every play they had to also. It's just to go from what we had last year where we were averaging, I don't even want to say how many errors we were averaging a game, to to this game. I mean, errors are going to happen. How do you pick yourselves up from that? And again, going back to what Izzy did, she picked herself up from her error. I'll live with an aggressive error like that all day. You, you throw the ball, you throw it hard, it sails a little bit, it happens. It's what are you going to do after it? And that's where this team is really coming along even more. And, I mean, you could even see the fans got into this game, which is something that happened With some happen coaxing here from somebody. Yeah, oh, uh, yeah, I wonder who that was. <laughs> you haven't seen that at over in a long time, though. And, again, we just we want to be that change. And the other sports have been doing a good job, you know, starting to get the winning tradition going. And my girls know that this is, this is our year to really get them going and to get people to know who we are. Um, because, again, we're only going up from here. This is, this is a team that people better watch out for because they're going to keep fighting. All right. One other question. Just seventh inning. Two outs. Fly ball to center field. Eschbach goes back. Tough play. Looked like she had it for a second. Pops out. She's lying on the ground. What is going through? Other than hopefully she's okay, this is nothing serious. From a strategy point of view and game situation, what's going through your head? Well, it's kind of funny because until Kayla, the trainer, looked at me and said, you might want to get someone loose, my whole concentration was on Haley. It was, is she okay? Because, again, 
the game's not bigger than these girls. And so for me, it was making sure that she was good. When I got out there and realized that, yeah, she was a little banged up, but she was okay, we weren't gonna need any serious medical attention, then I was trying to figure out, okay, what move do we make to make sure that we are as solid as we can be as a team? And that's where, again, having a senior like Flores off the, coming off the bench, she's played infield and outfield, I knew that she could handle it if the ball came to her. And, you know, move Hess over to center, who can all obviously play center. She played all last year. Dre can play any of the three outfield positions. For me, it was just trying to get that best extra outfielder out there to try and make sure that we were ready if that ball came. Because you know as well as I do, being around this enough, that ball usually finds the, the replacement. And so for me, it was who, who can make that play, who do I have that confidence in. And, and then again, coming through and Bayer just making the pitches to end it was... I'm speechless. I mean, these, these girls are just amazing. Well, congratulations, Coach. Another Lego piece on those building blocks here this is. afternoon and evening. Get that big conference victory, and you, you get to end that, that streak and, and put it to bed. And congratulations to you and your squad on that accomplishment. Thank you so much. And, again, I don't want to, like, step on any toes here, but I do want to uh, also say a huge thank you to Lauren and Taylor, my assistant coaches, because without them, none of this happens. These two are literally my right and left hand um, between lineups, uh, helping me with the lineups, helping me with in-game decisions at the practices. I mean, you know, I know a lot of head coaches try and take all the credit. I would be nothing without the two of them. And I just want to make sure that they know how much I appreciate everything they do for, for not only me, but for the girls too. Uh, they, they're literally bleeding over and red. And it's appreciative because a game like this, again, all three of us are sitting there strategizing everything as, as we go through. And I got to be honest, I thought Haley had that ball and then she didn't. And I'm like, oh no, oh no. And we knew we could pull it off, so. Coach Jarmus, congrats and uh, Go and your team's waiting around. Yeah, so they're you, waiting you, for you, me. you should probably say say something else to them other than what you already said. They so. know I talk too much. It's all good. <laughs> thank you so much. Hey, thank you. Congratulations on the victory. Thank you very much. That was head coach Sean Jarmus. Alverno splits a doubleheader with Lakeland. They fall in game number one, 12-1, but they're able to come back after giving up six runs in the top of the first inning in game two to pull out a 10-9 victory, ending a conference losing streak that dates back to 2019 and a home conference losing streak that dates back to 2018. They were able to squish the fish in game number two and take down Lakeland 10-9.